he starts with the root of the problem, which is the brain. I think that, I mean, it's genius. Why wouldn't everyone do that, you know? Don't just focus on the brain. Focus on other organs in your body. And in this book, he goes over the acronym Brain XL, and that's what his whole book is based on, and he breaks down each one, if I'm not mistaken. You can tell, you can tell that I have a cow look by how my hair goes up and over, and this goes straight. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the first to the podcast review series. And this could be a hit or miss series, but you never know. I never know. We're just going to get into it. So today's podcast review is going to be about Jay Shetty on purpose. And his podcast is all about mental health. It was the number one for a while. It could still be number one. I haven't looked at it in a while and I know there is some controversy out there about him because he doesn't, there's proof that he doesn't necessarily quote his information and he quotes it as he said it himself basically. So I understand that I'm taking some of this with a grain of salt, but some of this is good information so that's why I do want to film it. And the podcast today will be the episode with Dr. Daniel Amen. If you don't know who he is, you should definitely research him. Don't just take my word for it because he is amazing. At least I think he's amazing. And his background is that he was an x-ray tech. Uh, he's got a degree in biology. He's got a medical degree. He has a whole bunch of degrees. He is a great psychiatrist. He basically started doing therapy in a different way with his clients. And he started doing SPECT imaging, which we will get into later. And he's also wrote over 30 books. Like that's a lot of books. And then he also was the co-author of even more books. So he does a lot on the brain on the health of the brain, the health of the mind, all of that stuff. And the way he goes about counseling people is he looks at the brain first to see if your brain is actually healthy. He scans the brain before he, before he diagnoses you. He basically scans your brain to see if there's any unhealthy areas, looks over your troubled areas, basically. It's genius. Why are not more people doing this? He says he's trying to change the dynamic of psychiatry, and I love that. And because he's been so successful with this, he's even opened up clinics called the Amen Clinics, his last name. And hopefully one day, it's a goal to go get my brain scanned. I would love that. If you want to change something, then why not go look at it at its root, you know? One of his quotes, he starts off, the whole podcast starts off with, the first thing you have to do is if you want a better life, is you have to start wanting a better brain. And I think that's genius. How are you going to know what's wrong if you don't look at the brain? That's his whole conclusion of this podcast episode, and I love it. So this podcast really talks about um, two of his books, and one of them is called Feel Better Fast, Make It Last, which I already have on my recommendations list. So hopefully I can get to that book soon. And... He talks about how he used to look at the brain with using the study of quantitative EEG and the analysis of EEG and EEG is tests that detects abnormalities in your brain waves or the electrical activity in your brain, also called brain mapping. And when he would do that, he would see patterns for depression and ADHD and really looked into the patterns of all these traits and what made what. 
And obviously I don't know all the terms because I'm not trained in that area. But when you listen to the podcast, it'll all make sense the way he breaks it down. It's incredible. And then after he would use the quantitative EEG style, he would then start to get into aspect imaging, which is a nuclear imaging test, but it analyzes the blood flow and the activity in your brain. It's amazing. And he said he's been doing it ever since, which is how he created the Amen Clinics. He then starts talking about like his background and the trauma he had with his first wife and how emotional that was. He, he said his first wife um, attempted suicide. And so he gives background on the emotional feelings behind what she went through, what he went through and all of that stuff. So that's what inspired him to be a psychiatrist in the first place because he wanted to help people. So if he can look at your brain and analyze it that way first, instead of automatically trying to listen to you and hear you out and then prescribing you something, he starts with the root of the problem, which is the brain. I think that, I mean, it's genius. Why wouldn't everyone do that, you know? So he wants to look at your brain and the damage and then diagnose you. He wants to know if your brain is working too hard or not working enough or if it's thriving in one area but not another he goes over all that detail and talks about how he analyzes it it's incredible to hear him talk with such passion you can tell he really wants to change psychiatry and how it's done he then goes into if you if you really want a healthy brain obviously first of all look at it and then second, don't just focus on the brain. Focus on other organs in your body, like your gut, liver, heart. He then goes into three tiny habits to get a better brain. First one, whatever you say or do or eat, ask yourself, is this good or bad for your brain? So he talks about anything you put out into the world basically, which it could be helpful and it could work for some people, but it might not work for everybody. Number two, write down your thoughts and ask yourself, is it true? And he goes into, which I'm pretty sure some of you have heard this, but if not, he goes into saying, you don't have to believe every thought that you think. And he gives examples like with his four-year-old and there's a book, it's a children's book he wrote that you don't have to believe in everything that you think. So if you have a bad thought or even a thought that you don't necessarily want, you don't have to believe in it. And then he goes into the acronym he made up, ANTS, which goes into automatic negative thoughts that you don't have to believe every automatic negative thought you have. And tip number three is start every single day by stating today will be a good day. And your unconscious mind will find different ways for you to realize why today would be a great day. And it would focus on what went well because it's, it's natural for us to think negatively at first on what went wrong versus what went right. So I love that. And in this book, he goes over the acronym Brain XL, which stands for B is for brain, R is for rational mind, A is for attachment, I is for inspiration, N is for nourishment, X is the X factor and L is for love. And that's what his whole book is based on. And he breaks down each one, if I'm not mistaken. So they don't go over every single acronym in this episode of this podcast, but they go over a few. And one of them is A for attachment. They talk about that subject quite a bit and how people get attached or not attached and the tip and the tip he gives is another acronym which you'll find a lot with him 
I feel like he says when he was a kid, he was growing up and he was in school, he used to love acronyms. So there's a lot throughout this whole thing. And for attachment, he talks about the acronym relating. R for responsible for the relationship, E empathy for that person, L for listening, A for assertiveness, T for time, I for inquire into the negative thoughts, N notice what you like more than what you don't, and G is for grace and forgiveness. And then he gives a little bit of small detail about each one, which I don't want to go into because again, this is kind of going to be like the book reviews and I want the podcasts that I mentioned to be supported and go listen to the whole thing. His next acronym letter that Jay brings up is I for inspiration. And that brings up the topic of our pleasure centers are being worn out and the area in our brain called the nucleus accumbens and when it gets pushed with dopamine it feels good but the more you do it and the more you do things that push on it it will wear it out and wear out your pleasure center which is why he says drug addicts chase that high because they're wearing out their pleasure centers and chasing it all over again the most interesting topic to me that he stated was that your prefrontal cortex is developing from 15 years old to 25 for girls and 28 for boys. And that that's the most important time for your prefrontal cortex and with its development. And it's most important because your prefrontal cortex controls your attention, impulse control, and and managing emotional reactions and even your comprehension. It's also known as the executive part of the brain. This podcast episode goes over so much more like the effects of marijuana and alcohol. He goes over all his background stories. He goes over case studies and has examples of different clients. He goes into other books, like I said, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. That's another one of his books. And the acronym for that book, which is Bright Minds. He goes into all his research that he's done over, I think it was 40 years, he said. And even tells a story of how he got invited to the White House for suggestions. They were looking for him to give answers and basically get his input. It's hard to kind of relay all the information they talked about in this podcast because for one, all they talk about is psychology, him being a psychiatrist and all his acronyms. So I hope this comes across in the correct order. (laughs) You guys should definitely go listen to it. I think it's a 70 minute podcast, but it honestly gives a whole new perspective. I personally think it's life-changing to hear this man talk about psychiatry in a whole new way. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, I cannot wait to see where this channel is at in a few more months because I have so many ideas for different types of videos. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. And I definitely need to Google different words for super excited. There's just something about getting a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. And you just hold it. And you taste all the flavors. No? Okay, just me. Moving on then. Um, yep. We got some new products. I feel good. I think this shade is a little too dark for my skin tone. Oh yeah, this is way too dark for my skin tone. Diagnosing? (laughs) Um, before he diagnoses, before he gives you a diagnose? Why can I not say that word? (laughs) Get a little bit extra coverage here because I am breaking out and I don't know why. Ashcore? (laughs) Ashcore? 
your impulse control. Man, it, I don't understand. 